UTPA men's basketball opened the season against two tough teams from the Houston area. We'll see how they did. UTPA women's basketball got their first win for Coach Tidwell, and Bronx baseball has another Hall of Famer. This is Bronx Country. Welcome to Bronx Country. I'm Jonah Goldberg. It's that time of year again. It's basketball season. Bronx men's and women's basketball each two games in. Let's see how they're doing. We start with the men who opened the season against Sam Houston State on Friday and newcomer Shaq Boga had a big game. Gets the scoring started with a layup. Next time down the court, it's the other half of the Shaq attack. Shaquille Hines makes it four to nothing. A little later on, Blake Provost playing some defense. The steal lets Jamal Dantzler feed Alex Majewski's first career basket. The Bronx lead is 12 to 4. Midway through the first half, Lori Toivonen grabbing the rebound, making the fake, and then the basket. The Bronx lead is 14-6. On to the second half. Bearcats have come back to tie the game, but Javon Farrell wants the lead back. 33-31 Bronx. After the Bearcats tie the game again, this time it's Josh Cleveland's turn. Makes it 35-33 Bronx. And then Justin Leathers gets the lead up to four. It's 37-33. The Bearcats spent the next eight minutes on a 24-6 run to go up 14, but here come the Bronx. Leathers makes it a 12-point game. And then Boga gets it within single digits. Under five minutes to play, back to Leathers. Bronx within six. Now under two minutes to play. Hurley Johnson from the land of the three. Bronx within three. 7.1 seconds left, and Johnson finds space for a layup. Bronx get within one, but the Bearcats hit their free throws and go on to win 77-73. Four Bronx reached double figures in scoring. Hines had his career high with 10 points and set a new career high with seven rebounds. Bogo led the Bronx with a career high 17 points on seven to 15 shooting, a performance that impressed Coach Hipsher. Did a good job getting to the rim, made some good choices, made some tough shots, had the presence to come out here and play. Bronx hosting the Houston Cougars for the first time since 1987. And Javon Farrell had a big day. Gets the game's first basket. More from him later. 30 seconds later, game tied at four, and Shaq Boga puts the Bronx back on top. Cougars go up three, and you do not want to leave Justin Leathers that wide open. Ties the game at 11. Cougars scored the next six, but the Bronx ready to answer. Jamal Dantzler with the layup. And then Ali, whoop! Josh Cleveland rocks the rim. Farrell ties the game at 18. And then at 21. The Cougars responded with a 19-7 run, going up as many as 12. But in the closing seconds of the first half, with the Bronx down 11, look at Christian Hildebrand from behind the NBA line. Bronx within eight. On to the second half, and the Bronx are on fire. Shaq Hines brings the Bronx within 48-40. Farrell follows with the layup. Hines with a putback, and then Boga to the basket. Game tied at 48. A minute later, Leathers at the free throw line, and it gives the Bronx their first lead since early in the first half. The Bronx and Cougars started trading baskets with Cleveland putting the Bronx up 53-51. Boga making it 55-53, and Farrell making it 57-55. Then after the Cougars took the lead, Farrell ties it at 59 with a pair of free throws, but the Cougars closed the game on an 18-6 run to beat the Bronx, 77-65. Three Bronx in double figures, Farrell with 16 points, Boga had 15, and Leathers with 10. Despite the loss, the Bronx realized that playing this well early in the season against a power conference team speaks volumes about the team that they have the ability to become. Oh, I mean, I feel like we could go up against a lot of people. Uh... We just we just need to put it all together, put two halves together, full 40 minutes, and uh, just get everybody on the same page. If we could have took transition out of this game in offensive rebounding, which again is their athleticism speaking, <laughs> uh, we, we played pretty well. Uh, but uh, again, they made us pay in those situations. And what it did show is tonight we executed a little bit better, cut a little bit harder, and maintained it for a while. But we got to find a way to be able to do that for 40 minutes. Here's a look at the WAC non-conference standings. Utah Valley and Idaho at the top. 
plenty of games on the docket over the next week. As the Bronx open up the Texas A&M Corpus Christi tournament at home against Houston Tillotson before going to Corpus for games Friday, Saturday and Sunday. The Bronx have a number of returners this year, but one of them has a little more experience thanks to a summer of international play. Khadija Zarate has the story. Dedication, determination and hours of practice can lead in one direction, success. And Lori Toivinen, a UTPA junior, knows this all too well. Latte, as his teammates call him, had the honor of playing with the Finnish national team at the World University Games in Russia. During the spring, last spring, they sent me uh, in, like uh, that I have been selected for this group, and then I have to like get a certification from the school that I'm a student, and then uh, during the summer we had a, a one-week practice camp. And we have 15 players and then they picked 12 players and I, got, I made it to the team. The first one to get to practice and the last one to leave, Toivinen, is not only a star on the court, but in the classroom as well. Latte, as we call him, uh, has a, a great feel for the game and an understanding. He's got a great work, ac work ethic. Uh, as you know, he's a, a student of the game and a great student in the classroom, a 4.0 in engineering. So... Uh, he, he's going to adapt to any situation he's in because he, he knows how to work and he knows how to take care of his business. From the basketball courts of Finland to the classrooms of UTPA, Toivinen illustrates how hard work and determination can translate across nations. The best part was uh, playing different countries. We played Mexico, USA, Brazil, uh, Chile, like those countries I never played before. And then uh, one other thing was uh, playing with old friends like most of the players uh, are my old friends from uh, from Finland, so that was a great experience too. Reporting from the UTPA Fieldhouse, I'm Kiri Gisante with Bronx Country. UTPA women's basketball held their season opener a few hours before the men, taking on Shriner, and the Mountaineers led once in this game. It was 3-2, to two, but Brittany Bush comes up with a layup to make it 4-3 to three Bronx. Two minutes later, freshman Shante Goff into the game and making an immediate impact. First career basket makes it 6-3 Bronx. Next time down the court, Jasmine Thompson makes it a five-point Bronx advantage. And then on the ensuing possession, we're back to Goff. Buries the three to cap a 9-0 run, Bronx lead 11-3. And then after a Shriner bucket, it's Goff again. 14-6 Bronx. Shriner closed within 21-18, but Tonisha Walker having none of that. Connecting from downtown not once, but twice. And then after a Shriner free throw, Walker nails a jumper to put the Bronx lead into double figures for the rest of the game. All part of a 29-5 run, capped by the Sherelle Price three that made it 50-23. Bronx got everyone into the game. Freshman Keani Clark with the board in the bucket to give the Bronx their first 41-point lead. And then in the final minute, we're back to Goff. 18 points makes for the highest scoring debut by a Bronx freshman in six years. Bronx roll, 87-46. Goff was 6 for 11 from the field and added four rebounds and a steal for good measure in her 18 minutes. 12 points each for Jasmine Thompson and Tonisha Walker. 11 rebounds and three blocks from Brittany Bush. Not a bad debut for Coach Tidwell. But I know Shantae Goff has a lot of points in a few minutes. I mean, she can get some stuff done. She's going to get better. I know JT attacked the basket really well. We did a lot of good things. The Bronx traveled to Texas Tech on Sunday, and although the game was close early, the Red Raiders pulled away for a 70-48 win. Trell Price and Shazay Wright led the Bronx with nine points each. Another strong game for Brittany Bush, as she finished with eight points, seven rebounds, and two steals. Here's a look at the WAC non-conference standings. The Bronx won of four teams with a win thus far. The Bronx have over a week off before hosting Texas Lutheran on Tuesday at the UTPA Fieldhouse. And although the Bronx are already a few games in, season tickets are still available. Men's tickets start at $75, women's tickets start at $50. Get them now before it's too late. Over the last few weeks, we've told you about the UTPA volleyball team's Hawaiian Punch and their Texas 10. Next on Bronx Country, we'll learn about one member of the Bronx roster who comes all the way from Germany. <laughs> This 
This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronx country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season, grew up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference. The UTPA volleyball team returned home for consecutive games for the first time in a month following up a 15,000 mile jaunt across America with three home matches in four days. The Bronx started the homestand against Texas Southern on Wednesday and first it was Maria Klefok making it one to nothing. Alicia Watson put the Bronx up four to two and then Haley Durham made it five to three. Bronx take the first set 25-17. On to the second set, and early on, it was more of the same. Watson makes it two to one, and then Durham makes it three to two. Middle of the set, it's Casey Sanchez. Bronx up 14-7, and then we're back to Watson. Puts the Bronx up 22-17. Bronx take the set 25-21. The Bronx drop the third set, so we move ahead to the fourth, and it's Watson again. Gives the Bronx a 23-17 lead. Bronx go on to take the set 25-18 to clinch the match. Watson with 13 kills and 7 digs. Sanchez had 10 kills. Durham led the way with a career-high 16 kills, drawing praise from Coach Yell. She's been playing well all season. Um, you know, she's, with some of the injuries and things that have gone on, you know, she's been a target for everybody. She's always had a double block on her, and she still continues to find a way to score. Quick turnaround for the Bronx as Chicago State came to town the next night, and Maria Clefo had a huge match. This kill makes it one to nothing in the first set. This next kill makes it 2-1. to one. Clee Folk finished with 15 kills. Later in the set, from one middle to the other, it's Haley Durham with the kill. Makes it 22-13, and then Durham makes it 23-14. Bronx take the set, 25-14. On to the second set, maybe the play of the season. Shanice Faison's pass heading for the scores table, but look at Casey Sanchez. Gets it back to Faison, who sends it back over, and the Cougars can't return it. Coach Yale happy with the result. That was a big rally for us. Uh, you know, we, we work on that, you know, a couple times a, a month, you know, pursuit and playing balls over barriers and things like that. But, you know, pursuit is the big thing. If you can do that, it can rattle other teams. And uh, so we've done a nice job. You know, we started with that last spring. Is, it was really kind of a, a focus for us. And they've taken to it. You know, Casey's one of our quickest. And so for her to go run down that ball was, was really nothing. You know, we expect to to get that ball back and you know Shanice just had to put a, an easy ball back into play so that we could regroup and you know kind of caught him off guard a little bit. Back to action later in the set the Cougars have set point but Alicia Watson equal to the task. Ties it at 24. One point later the Bronx have set point Watson serving and ace. Bronx go up two to nothing. The Cougars take the third set so we move on to the fourth and Durham gets the Bronx off to a good start. Three to one Bronx. Later on, Bronx up two, Krista Freitas gets the Bronx to match point. And then Cleefolk puts a bow on it. Bronx win, three to one. Cleefolk at 583 for the match. Durham right behind with 14 kills on 458 hitting. Watson recorded her third double-double with 10 kills and 11 digs to go with three aces. In the beginning, I was really fired up. Um, I was just came out ready to play and execute. Um, this is a game that we love to uh, play really hard against and um, I was just fired up and I had a little a little dip in the middle but I, I came out strong and I was just really excited to play today. Bronx closing out the homestand against Kansas City on Saturday and this was a tight match. Early first set Maria Klefolk with the kill ties it at one. One serve later Casey Sanchez ties it at two. Next play Anjanae Janda gives the Bronx a three to two lead. Bronx dropped the first set, so on to the second, and on the opening serve, it's Haley Durham putting the Bronx up one to nothing. Middle of the set, how about some more Sanchez? Makes it 10 to eight Bronx. Then on set point, Sanchez slams it home. Ties the match at one, but Kansas City goes on to win three to one. Durham led the Bronx with 10 kills. Three Bronx reached double figures in digs, led by Shanice Faison who had 15, 
Macy Singleton, who had a season-high 12, and Krista Freitas, who notched 11. If you look at the Bronx roster, you'll see 10 student-athletes from Texas, three from Hawaii, and one from Germany. While most college students have to deal with change when moving away from home, few have to adjust to a new continent and a new language as well. Romeo Villarreal has more. When looking at the Bronx volleyball roster, you may notice the three players from Hawaii, or a majority of the players being from right here in Texas, but one thing you'll definitely notice is the Bronx one international player, Maria Klefoth. How did this highly recruited prospect from Berlin, Germany end up right here in the Valley? After my senior year, or actually before my senior year, I got a lot of um, emails from coaches from diff actually all over the country. And um, I actually chose this school because of the weather, first of all. Germany's obviously really cold, so I really like the palm trees and the pool. It's like vacation to me every day. And then on YouTube, I actually saw something called Bronx Got Talent, which <laughs> apparently the volleyball team did that every year. So it was fun to see the team have a good chemistry back then and like have a lot of fun together. So I like that. While today Maria feels quite at home here at UTPA, she does admit that things weren't always so easy for her here in South Texas. The biggest challenge... I mean, I missed my family, obviously, and um, at first the language barrier, a couple injuries, <laughs> that was hard, so um, right now everything is awesome. <laughs> With all the struggles Maria's had to face in her college career, Coach Yeo believes it has made her one of the hardest working members of the Bronx team, and has also made her somebody that the rest of the team can look up to for inspiration. She's given it all every day. Uh, you know, and to go th work through some of the, the injuries and personal situations that she's had throughout her career, uh, you know, starting off with the, the ankle injury and all that that, you know, she had to rehab from. You know, she's just a, she's a good mentor. She's a good icon for the kids to live up to. Uh, you know, she does the same in the classroom. She works her, her tail off and, you know, it, it shows uh, with her grades and everything else. And, uh, you know, she's just one of those kids that, you know, is, is hard to replace. Reporting from the UTPA Fieldhouse for Bronx Country, this is Romeo Villadiao. UTPA baseball head coach Manny Mantrana is pretty good at his job. How good? Coming up on Bronx Country, we take you to Coach Mantrana's induction into the St. Thomas University Hall of Fame. UTPA baseball head coach Manny Mintrana often talks about the importance of leaving a legacy. In fact, behind getting a degree, to Mintrana, there's little more important than leaving a legacy. And you know what? He's off to a good start. Raquel Gonzalez has more. <laughs> Let me take you on a journey through a very special man's life. A man that has brought inspiration and life lessons to the UTPA baseball team. Well, after I retired from professional baseball, I was kind of wondering what to do. Um, one day I was in my car and at a red light, I saw this high school baseball practice over at Miami Springs in Miami, Florida. And I looked at the coach and he was setting up the field and I thought, hey, that, you know, that's, that'll be pretty good. I get to coach, get paid, something I, I love to do. So that's how I started coaching. I started at back at my old high school where I graduated from at Miami Jackson. And I was there for five years. Then I went as an assistant to Miami-Dade North. Um, and I was there for a year. And then from the fall of 1996 through the fall of 2008, I was at St. Thomas University in, in Miami, Florida, uh, where this past weekend uh, they deemed me uh, worthy enough to uh, join their, their Hall of Fame. And it's, it's, it was a great honor and a great privilege. We were fortunate to, uh, to get to three College World Series. We were fortunate to win five conference championships in 12 years, and we reached the postseason, the regional tournaments, in nine out of those 12 years. I um, also was fortunate to have a, a lot of good players. Obviously, when you're that good, it's uh, the coaching is an aspect of it, but you also need very good players, and we did, ha we did uh, have good players. Uh, and again, I'm proud that uh, 10 of our players, while I was at St. Thomas University, made academic All-American. Coach Mantrana appreciates having his family support and recognizes the sacrifices that are made as a baseball coach. That award, being in the Hall of Fame, starting with the players. Obviously, you know, when you go back, uh, you know, your parents, you know, your siblings. Uh, my wife was outstanding. She's, you know, it's not easy being married to a, to a baseball coach. Crazy hours, all kinds of phone calls, all hours of the night, uh, being away from home for four or five days at a time. So uh, she definitely is, uh, is the rock. Um, 
and she's held the house together. So a lot of credit goes to her. Um, so babe, I love you and thanks for everything. In order for Coach to get to that position in the Hall of Fame, uh, he's had to work really hard. And and with with any position in coaching, you start um, you know at the bottom. For him to work his way up and, and to be a head coach, and then to be a head coach at the Division One level. And then to get inducted into a Hall of Fame at a university, uh, it, it's a lot of hours put in. It's a lot of uh, blood, sweat, and tears, as they say. My biggest influence throughout my life has been my mom. She worked three jobs to support us. She basically had no life. All she did was work to, to support her kids. Coach Mantrana has not only earned respect on the field, but off the field as well. It's, it's an honor to be around him. Even, even if he wouldn't have gotten inducted, it doesn't say who he is as a person. It's, it's, he's one of my mentors, someone that has taught me so much. He's helped me really calm myself down and organize my thoughts. So the Hall of Fame obviously is a great honor, but if he wouldn't have gotten inducted, he's a, he's a Hall of Famer in my eyes. You For know? Mantrana, it's really about just, uh, just about being a person, a better person. Um, you know, just caring a lot about your family, your faith in these teammates, and just, you know, if we're, we come together as a group and a family, then the baseball is just, you know, just secondary. For Brown Country, I am Raquel Gonzalez. And while Mantrana has an incredible legacy at St. Thomas, he's already building a legacy here at UTPA. Last year, Mantrana spearheaded a bone marrow drive that attracted a whopping 250 registrants. This year, He's working with UTPA Women's Basketball, and we're just days away from the drive. It's really important because right now this is the only known cure for those patients that have leukemia, sickle cell anemia, those types of blood cancers. So they need someone to match their same gene typing. So 70% of our patients that are searching do not have a match within their family. The Bronx will hold the bone marrow drive at the UTPA library on Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. If you can't wait and want to donate now, log on to bethematch.org for more information. Want to support the Bronx the way they're supporting the community? Donate to the Bronx Athletic Fund today. You can become a member of the BAT for just $50 a year. All of the money raised goes directly to student athlete scholarship. So visit broncathleticfund.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronx country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season, grew up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Here's a look at what's coming up for the Bronx. Men's basketball is heading to a tournament at Texas A&M Corpus Christi to play three games in three days over the weekend. Women's basketball has a week off before coming home to face Texas Lutheran on Tuesday. Volleyball has its final road match on Friday. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx country this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then, Go Bronx! <laughs>
commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronx country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season, grew up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference.